We have human tendencies to stay stuck and to just tell people that they should accept us for the way that we are, but this isn't going to yield you the success that you want in actually becoming that girl. Becoming that girl. Today we're going to talk about the hot topic of becoming that girl, which essentially is just the 2021 version of a glow up. But we're gonna take a more holistic approach. On this channel, if you are familiar, if you are a subscriber that is returning, side note, thank you very much for being here, thank you for liking, thank you for commenting, thank you for subscribing. You know that we talk about traditional living, we talk about femininity, and most importantly, we like to carry ourselves like elegant women. Considering that I'm somebody who occasionally makes content on a TikTok, I have noticed the trend of that girl. These videos of women who are putting their best foot forward and becoming the most fit they can be, the best looking that they can be, and to a certain extent, they're also focusing on their spiritual life. These are all good things and you know that I'm a big advocate of self-improvement and anytime that you want to step into being somebody different or take a new direction in your life, as long as it is with the best intentions, it is something that is absolutely positive. So today I'm going to give you four tips on how I believe that I have become that girl in my own life from my respective perspective. Some of the concepts that I mentioned today are repetitive things that I have already addressed on my channel. So if you're interested in more of this type of content, go through my femininity as well as elegance playlist where you can find me dive deeper into each topic. As always, before I start off with my first point, I encourage you to leave your comments down below. How have you embodied that girl energy in your life? What self-improvement things have you taken on or which direction are you going into and what are you focusing on for the remainder of the year? So let's start. The first thing that I want to address is the princess versus queen queen energy. When I made a video on this, there were a few people who misunderstood what I was saying. You have to listen to the entire video and you really have to watch the movie that I referenced, which is the 2009 version of Cinderella, in order to truly grasp the transition that I want you to embark on. Girlhood is so magical and I definitely am opposed to people in their teenage years growing up too fast into adulthood prematurely. I think that you should soak up every moment of being a girl because it truly is a wonderful part of childhood. That being said, when we analyze girlhood, there are so many innocent characteristics that we want to preserve as we become a more self-actualized woman. But the problem with modern society right now is that we get stuck in this kind of extended adolescence. Younger people are engaging in more adult behavior earlier on, yet there's a big element of not accepting responsibility that is still keeping them back in childhood even when they reach their later 20s. A big part of femininity is is understanding the gravity of being able to hold adult relationships as well as responsibilities when it comes to your own domain. And this is why I use that Cinderella movie as an example because we see near the end of the movie when Cinderella becomes a queen when she marries the prince that she has been able to go through challenges that allowed her to apply her courage and her kindness in a more mature way. In order to do that in your life you have to really be honest with yourself with your flaws, where you're not taking responsibility for your life. Are you blaming other people for your mistakes? Are you running away from relationships, from friendships? Are you dealing with negative habits to address your depression and your anxiety? In order to become that girl, you have to understand where you fall short in these areas. And again, becoming a queen does not mean that you get rid of your childlike playfulness, for example. This just means that you become a more multifaceted woman. When you think of the picture of that girl, she is somebody who is interesting, she is somebody who is worldly, she is sophisticated, and you only get there through knowing your strong points and your weak points and actually going out and doing the hard work when it comes to relationships, when it might even come to your own job, even if you are a full-time homemaker, taking that seriously. All of these things are going to give you the ammo in your backpack to be able to have that womanly wisdom. The second point is that girl girl understands her body. I have mentioned countless times on this channel the importance of cycle syncing and other femininity content creators have also started to talk about this. This is something that honestly changed my life. Periods are not meant to be painful. Of course you're going to have some discomfort that is just a part of the transition through the different phases in the month, but they're not supposed to be debilitating. Your period actually 
is a time where you can maximize your intuitive energy. It's the time where you can reflect upon the past month and you can take that time to rest, heal your body, and start fresh when it is over. I'll link some resources down below that you can check out if you have absolutely no idea where to start. And I also made a video a long time ago. I think it was my third video ever or something like that. So I'm very sorry about the quality of my videos. <laughs> they slightly improve with time. Anyway, I will also link that down below. But a big part of the TikToks that I've seen on Becoming That Girl have been solely focused on fitness. This is a really good thing because health is wealth and health is one of the most important aspects of your life because you cannot kind of tap into those deeper parts of meaning in life without actually having a healthy body to the full extent in which yours can be. But I also want to urge you to have a balanced approach. Understand that your body is different than a man's body. So whatever works in terms of fitness for men is going to look different for you. And also back to cycle syncing, what you can do every month is going to fluctuate depending on the phase of your menstrual cycle. And like I mentioned in my feminine habits video, I felt more feminine and more in touch with my body when I actually started gaining a little bit of weight because I realized I wasn't eating enough for my fertility when I was trying to get pregnant. For example, a woman's body is often going to need more fats in order to actually support reproduction. And just because you might not want to get pregnant right now doesn't mean that you shouldn't have healthy reproduction because it truly is a very big indicator in your face of how the rest of your body is doing. And I also have to mention the aspect of sleep. An elegant woman is a rested woman. And of course, there are different phases, different seasons of life where we might not get a lot of sleep. I'm about to embark on a season of life when I have a newborn baby where I probably will only sleep in a couple hour increments. And that doesn't necessarily mean that all my work on trying to become more elegant goes out the window. What I'm trying to say is that if you have the luxury of scheduling yourself some more time to sleep, I advocate that you take it. In today's hustle culture, and especially in the That Girl videos, the 5 a.m., 4.30 a.m. wake up times are very popular. And I used to be a person who got up very early before I was pregnant. I would get up between 5.30 and 6.30, even though I am a night owl and I am not a morning person. But I was able to balance out my sleep by getting into bed earlier or by taking a nap to compensate for missed hours of sleep. You would be surprised at what a 15 minute nap does for your mood and how it changes your perspective, especially if you are having a rough day or you are just feeling defeated. Trust me, sister, go take a 15 minute nap. And women, we are different than men. We often need more sleep. And I'm not exactly sure the exact reason, but I think that it could have to do with something linked to emotional baggage. A lot of us underestimate the mental load of carrying the emotional worries of our family, for example, and just that extra mental energy that we exert every day for planning. So speaking of energy, the third thing that I want to talk to you about is how that girl doesn't waste extra energy on things that don't serve her. This doesn't mean that you need to hyper schedule everything in your life. I talked about in my feminine habits video how it is important to even let yourself engage in slow living and have pockets of time where you are bored so that you can learn what interests you and you can develop new hobbies, for example. What I mean is that you want to try to live more of an intentional life. Where are you wasting the most time? Social media is an excellent way to meet like-minded other women to get inspiration, but you can't spend your entire day on it. That girl, in terms of the one that is elegant, is going to be a woman who is continuously learning. And I also wanted to make a note because we do focus on traditional living on this channel, just because you might be a person who has a homemaking centered life, this doesn't mean that you can't stop learning. Some of the most educated and knowledgeable people that I know are stay at home moms or are housewives. And this is because they take that extra time when they are cleaning something to listen to an educational podcast, for example. Even if whatever you're learning about isn't going to directly serve you in your life, this doesn't mean that it is wasted. You would be surprised at how down the road actually knowing these things is going to help you. Even the actual process of developing your mind and your critical thinking skills by learning something new, you might not actually apply what you learned, like I just mentioned, but developing your brain is going to help you in something else. It could create more awareness, which will benefit your family. And on the topic of not wasting energy, that girl often invests in her relationships. We live in a very self-centered world. I've mentioned that countless times on this channel, and so many people 
people are so focused on achieving a money goal, for example, that they forget about the people in their lives that actually make life worth living. Feminine woman understands that one of the most important aspects of life is her relationships with other people. Traditional women often get labeled as people who invest their whole identity in other people and then when, for example, their husband leaves them, they are left with nothing. So that is not what I'm advocating for. And you'd be actually shocked to understand that most of us are aware of this fact and we don't actually fall into that trap. But many of us do understand that we cannot do life alone, that life is actually not about us and our own happiness. This is so countercultural, but I love what other people are talking about on the internet when it comes to the concept that you are not enough. I'm not going to bring my faith into this particular discussion, but once you understand that you are not enough just in yourself and that you need more, it is a very humbling experience. It gives you the opportunity to look outside of yourself and it also brings you to that queen energy back to the first point because you are able to understand that your immediate desires and your grievances aren't always the most important thing. This doesn't mean that you sacrifice yourself. Again, that's not what I'm advocating for on this channel, but I want you to have a more balanced perspective in this self-centered world. And lastly, that girl from an elegant perspective especially, understands that the total package matters. For the sake of stereotypes and an easy example, I'm going to ask you to think about if have you ever seen a woman who is well-dressed and put together and she just looked like the epitome of class, yet she opened her mouth and there was a bunch of vulgarity that came out of it. That is not what we're going for when we want to embody that girl energy. That's also why I harp on this channel on and on about how you can't just focus on the physical aspects of femininity because when you go through trials, those things are not going to last you. Have you ever been so stressed out that you neglect your appearance? For example, if you are in university or if you've ever been through university, you know that there are all nighter times where you need to study. That's just the nature of going to university. So if your whole identity is only focused on your appearance, you're going to end up looking like a naked mole rat. Yet, if you have considered the total package, the way that you act, the way that you carry yourself, your long-term habits when it comes to your beauty, then you're going to have a little bit more of a buffer space. And I've been thinking a lot about this as I progress through pregnancy because sometimes there are days where I'm just absolutely exhausted, especially in the first trimester. I struggled with laziness because my body just wanted to rest. Yet I didn't emerge after those three months having totally neglected myself because I was able to create a strong feminine foundation. I talk more about this in my video on tips for beginners when it comes to femininity, so I'm going to link that video down below if you want to get more more of an understanding of what it is exactly that I'm talking about. Another good example is to have you understand that many women are use femininity in order to find their masculine husband, and I am totally for that. But we wanna be women who have more to offer than just our appearance. We don't wanna be what they like to call catfish. Especially in modern society, many people don't have hobbies. They don't have interests that extend beyond their immediate friend group as well as social media. The feminine woman does have a vivacity side to her and in order to do that you have to have interests that go beyond just your appearance. Also don't neglect your mannerisms because regardless of what you look like, regardless of what you go through in your life, your mannerisms can exude elegance and class no matter what. Those are some of the most popular videos on my channel and I'm so happy about them because they are things that you can actually do in terms of the way that you act in order to be more feminine. But again, make sure that those aren't the only videos that you are consuming. I know that it isn't as fun to listen to a character building video about how you can change your personality. We have human tendencies to stay stuck and to just tell people that they should accept us for the way that we are but this isn't going to yield you the success that you want in actually becoming that girl. That girl has something different than other girls that can't be just achieved with quick fixes. So that means you're going to have to go through that activation energy, through the process of putting more effort in, in order to actually be at that higher level. So that's all that I have for you today. Again, leave me your comments down below. Go through my other videos that I linked down below as well as my playlist. Let's all strive to glow up in the 2021 sense where we are trying to become that girl, always elevating ourselves, always striving for more. 
and I will see you in our next video, lovely feminine friends. Remember to hit the like button. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.